The versatility of a digital SLR camera is enhanced through the interchangeability of the lenses. From ultra-wide angle to telephoto lenses, there is a broad range of options available, but it is worth considering how the optics affect the scene and how to choose a lens for your architectural and model images. All of the lenses shown here on the slide are zoom lenses, which gives a bit of versatility in the lens, but does come at a price, as zoom lenses tend to have a narrower aperture range that in turn affects the depth of field available. These first images are taken with a 10 to 20 mm focal length wide angle lens. A wide angle lens is great for constrained spaces and close up in general crowds. The main problems are the resulting distortion of the perspective and the improbable images that can result from using a very wide angle lens. Some perspective correction can be achieved in Photoshop, however, when there is an extreme three-point perspective present in the image, the final corrected images in Photoshop will look squashed or have an unusually flat perspective. Like the discussion about the benefit of shooting in RAW format, though some correction is possible post-production, it is always better to start with the best you can achieve through the lens in the first instance. This image was taken with a 20mm focal length. The extent of the three-point perspective distortion is less than the 10mm focal length, but it is still noticeable. You can manage the perspective distortion a bit by trying to hold the camera as horizontal as possible, because when you tilt the camera up and down, the perspective will tend to get exaggerated. The resulting images using the 10mm and 20mm focal length result in noticeable three-point perspective distortion. To create useful model images, this should be avoided. Perhaps the more optimum focal length for more true-to-life looking images is somewhere between 35 to 50 millimeters. When transitioning between the lenses for this demonstration, the position of the tripod and the cube remain the same. So with the new image shown here, we can immediately see the difference in the apparent position in space, and more importantly, the difference between the diminishing or vanishing vertical lines. This is the same setup using a 55mm focal length. The object both appears a bit larger and foreground cropping is greater. The perspective also looks a bit flatter. The image still looks more natural, but as we increase the focal length, the perspective will tend to flatten out. Using the 35 to 55 mm focal length has almost eliminated a vanishing third point perspective. The vertical geometry is straight and parallel. For images of buildings and architectural models in particular, this is the preferred outcome. Using a telephoto lens is for more specialist photography. Sports and wildlife photographers tend to use longer focal length lens to get close to the action. When taking images of models using a telephoto lens, it's a bit tricky because you have to get further and further away from the object to fit it into the frame. For this shot, we had to move the tripod further away from the cube to get it all in the frame. Telephoto lens tends to collapse the perspective and makes the objects look quite flat. They also tend to have a narrower depth of field due to the long distances that you are focusing across, so you will invariably get foreground and background parts of the scene out of focus. At our extreme end of our available telephoto lens at 300mm, the object will not fit in the frame. We do get some close-up detail, but looking at the image, you will also notice there is quite a shallow depth of field, as some parts of the cube in the distance are not in focus. Choosing the right lens is not that difficult, as by and large, architectural and architectural model photos work best with a mid-range focal length of between 35 to 50 millimeters. Though it is tempting to get dramatic images of buildings and models by using wide-angle and extreme three-point perspective distortion, the truth of communication is lost, and it becomes difficult to judge the value of the object we are looking at, because it's not really what it looks like in real life and the emphatic style of the extreme perspective does become quite distracting.